Hey guys, let's talk about Disney Plus. Now for all you Aussies, Disney Plus was released about a week behind the US, so that's been a couple of weeks ago. It's $89.99 per year with a seven day free trial. So if you like it, you can continue to, or you can start paying from that point on, and if you don't, you can cancel it. Is it worthwhile? Are there any new shows? Is there anything cool on it? Is it worthwhile spending another amount of money to get another TV subscription if you already have things like Foxtel and Netflix and so forth. Now the first thing just to let you know is that I don't know exactly what date but Foxtel is going to remove its Disney content soon so the only time you're going to be able to get your Disney fix is using something like Disney Plus. So if you've subscribed to Foxtel only to get Disney things which I'm sure most of you don't then that's a reason that you need to think twice about continuing that but that's not the subject of this video. This video is about looking at Disney Plus and see whether it's worthwhile or not for you. Now for us, I've done the seven day free trial and I'm now on the paid subscription. I must say that I haven't had a lot of chance to see a lot of the content, but I've checked out shows like The Mandalorian. There's a great kind of a documentary series with Jeff Goldblum, which I really enjoy. There are live action movies that I've yet to see. Things like Lady and the Tramp. There's new remakes of High School Musical. There's going to be new shows like Lizzie McGuire and there's all the other cl Disney classics, which I haven't had a chance to catch up with yet. But that's something I'm looking forward to be able to do in the not so distant future. So let's see how it all works. The first thing is, is that there's basically two ways to watch your Disney Plus. You can stream it on your device like your phone or your tablet by downloading the Disney Plus app. You enter your password and you're good to go. And the other way is for a family sharing sort of experience and that's to be able to play it on your TV. Now, unless you have a smart TV, there's got to, you have to find other ways of being able to get Disney Plus on it. One way is you can airplay the Disney Plus from one of your iPhones or iPads. I find that to be inefficient and I don't really want to do that. So I was hoping that I would be able to use Disney Plus via the Apple TV device that I have. That would be just the same as using, we've been streaming Netflix and YouTube and all that kind of stuff using our Apple TV. And I was hoping that it would be the same. Unfortunately for us, that's not been the case because the problem is that our Apple TV is too old. And as a result, I've had to go out and purchase a new Apple TV. I have got the TV, the Apple TV, the HD version, because we don't have a 4K TV anyway. We don't have any short-term plans of getting a 4K TV. And this device was $209, I believe. If you were to get it during the Black Friday sales, which is on right now, you get a $40 Apple Store gift card, but I bought this a week or so ago, and unfortunately I don't get entitled to that. This Apple TV is 32 gigabytes. I've yet to work out the need for all this memory, but I've never had one of these before, so I guess I'll find out. If you guys have owned the older version of the Apple TV, I'm not sure what version mine is, but we know that the remote control that it comes with is very clunky, it's terrible, I hate using it. So I've got the Apple TV remote, which I've installed onto my iPhone right there in the top. And that's how I control the Apple TV. So once I'm connected to the Apple TV, I wanted to just show you something. Now I'm just gonna turn this camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna move it quick closer to the screen. And as you can tell, as you scroll down the options for Apple TV, there are things like YouTube and there is Netflix. There is no Disney Plus option of this. So this is not going to get you onto the Disney Plus using Apple TV. So hence the reason why we've had to go ahead and purchase a new Apple TV. So right now I'm just going to do a really quick unboxing of the Apple TV. As I said, this is the HD version, 32 gigabytes. And in the box, there's the Apple TV device thing and there is another remote which is pretty much just as impressive it's slightly more impressive but still a little bit clunky compared to what you could do in the phone because one of the things I find that's really clunky is having to use the up and down keys just to do a search so you're gonna have to flick through every letter instead of being able to type the letters in and that's why I think the remote app on the phone is much more useful what else comes in this box? There is a USB to lightning cable. There's a let's get started thing. And in here there is a power adapter or a power cable. And that's all there is in the Apple TV. So comparing the 
old Apple TV that we have and the new Apple TV that we've got. The old one is about half the thickness. It's about the same size otherwise. The ports are a little bit different. The major difference is that the new one has USB-C and the old one has probably, I'm gathering, micro USB. It has, both of them has an HDMI port, an Ethernet port and a power socket. Now I would show you the old Apple TV remote which is a little thin slivery silver thing but I actually can't find it. But this is the new Apple TV remote control which is still in its nice little plastic shrink wrap. One thing to notice with the Apple TV, the new one as well, is that it doesn't come, come with a HDMI cable. So you've got to get your own one of these to be able to connect it to your television. So what I'm going to start now is I'm actually going to plug it in, power it up, check it out and see how we go. And according to the manual it's really easy, it says connect one end of the HDMI cable to a port on the back of your TV and connect the other end to your Apple TV. Turn on your TV, select the input which matches your HDMI input and follow the on-screen setup instructions. So it should be pretty simple. So let's give it a go now. So I've just plugged in the Apple TV into our television and into the PowerPoint. The one thing is that the power cord is compatible with the old one. So we just use that and we keep the new one as a backup. I'm gathering for the first time we're going to have to use this remote to get it started. So I'm just going to press some buttons randomly and see what happens. So the sound might go a bit funny because I'm pointing the camera the other way. But we're just setting it up as English which you scroll down so you can run the finger down the remote and pick your language and then it says select region so I'm selecting Australia see this is a thing and then you just press the click on the top and then I'm selecting Australia and then I'm continuing with the data and privacy I can choose to use Siri so I'll use Siri use your iPhone, iPad to touch the domain so Let's set up with device. So basically it's asking you to unlock your iPhone. So I'm unlocking the device. I've connected to a Wi-Fi network. The Bluetooth is on. Hold the device close to this Apple TV. So I'm putting the phone there and it says set up Apple TV. So that's really cool. Say hi to Buddha there as well. He's pretty cool. He's just sitting there but it's like basically setting up the new Apple TV by clicking connect. So it's kind of like setting up an AirPods and you don't seem to have to do very much other efforts. It's still saying connecting, connecting, connecting. Hopefully that'll finish soon. Now I'm going to try and do that again because it didn't seem to connect. So what I'll do is I'll actually click set up manually and see if that's any easier. So with that I'm selecting my Wi-Fi network. I'm not going to show you that bit obviously. And then I have to enter the Wi-Fi password. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now I've entered in my Wi-Fi password and it's just spinning, 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 spinning. Now it says activating Apple TV. This may take a few minutes to activate your TV, so we'll have to wait. The next screen is to enter your Apple ID, which I will do right now. So I've entered in the verification code. The screen is require password, which I always do because you don't want kids to be buying stuff that you don't want them to buy. So I'm going to go ahead and select always require. Where is the Apple TV? Well, this setup is taking longer than I thought. So we'll just make it the living room. We'll enable location services. See the world. How about we just do not now? Happy to send to Apple. Analytics. Yeah, happy to share. Agree to the terms and conditions. And there you go, there's the familiar Apple TV screen. And already you can see the Disney stuff come up. I guess we have to go to the App Store. So this is kind of like having a tablet. And you can pick what you want to set up. And I'm wondering whether you have to just find the, like the Disney Plus app to install into this thing to get it to start running. So, 
the options are Netflix is on here, 7 Plus, Live View Template, Ted NBA, Major League Baseball, YouTube. Do they have Disney Plus pre installed? It doesn't look it. So let's work out how to install an app on this thing. So we're going to have to go search. There you go, Disney Plus. So you select on that. And you want to just install it. Now we can go ahead and open the app. I'm sure it's going to ask for a password, which will be the next stage. There you go, Disney Plus. And it says starts every day free trial, as I mentioned, it's $8.99 a month or $89.99 a year. So I'm going to try use a mobile device that's connected to the same Wi-Fi network, open the Disney Plus app, and we'll take it from there. Let's see how well that works. So I'm putting in a, I'm opening my Disney Plus app on my iPhone and let's see what happens so I opened it it says device login request living room and you can click allow and it logs you in so there you go Disney plus ready to go and as you can see there's lots of selections my next stage is to set this up on my iPhone as a remote so I don't have to use this clunky thing but there you go there's your Disney Plus channel set up using Apple TV so now that Apple TV is set up we can all watch Disney Plus on TV now I'm going to go to my remote app and it's going to see if we can connect to this new Apple TV and it says it's found a living room one so just click on that it's gonna give you a password which I will enter and now hopefully so I now have control of my Apple TV. Oop. Go back to the menu. There you go. Go back to the menu. And now we have control of it using my phone. So that was slightly more clunky than I thought, just because I had to do the manual setup rather than the phone setting up. Maybe it would have worked, but it doesn't matter, it's not too difficult. Just remember you're gonna to have to enter a whole sleuth of passwords. And now we got Apple TV working. I'm going to explore it a little bit more. As I said, I had to replace my old Apple TV, be able to use the Disney Channel or the Disney Plus, but that's all good. It's something that we do because we love Disney so much. Hope you've enjoyed my quick unboxing of the Apple TV HD and also the setup of Disney Plus using the Apple TV. Hope you guys love Disney Plus as much as we do. And until next time, I'll catch you in another video. Remember to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up. See you next time.